George Farah is the executive director of Open Debates. He's also written a book called No Debate, how the Republican and Democratic Party secretly control the presidential debates. Good to have you with us, George. Uh, I mean, just watching this, uh, this third party debate, as it's called, are any of these candidates cr credible presidential candidates? No, no I, I, they're viable voices that represent large subsections of the population. They bring absolutely refreshing points of view with a, a significant amount of conviction. But are they actual contenders for the presidency? Absolutely not. None of these four candidates have a chance of actually occupying the White House in 2013. What about making an impact on the race, though? I mean, I know you were an advisor to Ralph Nader, who uh, took crucial votes away from Al Gore back in 2000. Could any of these opposition candidates, uh, Gary Johnston, for example, a libertarian, take votes away from the two main candidates? I think Gary Johnson actually is the most likely of the third party voices that we saw in tonight's debates to actually have a potential impact on the actual election. Gary Johnson is the former governor of New Mexico and he has an unprecedented amount of popular support precisely because Ron Paul, who was a Republican nominee during the Republican primaries, garnered remarkable attention. And there is a, a resurgent and vibrant stream of libertarian supporters in the United States that are strengthening their voice election season after election season. So Gary Johnson, if any of these four contenders for the presidency, has the greatest likelihood of, of conceivably costing a particular state to Mitt Romney. But even if they don't actually uh, the, change the course of the election, they do raise critical issues for public consumption and potentially have the capacity to alter the actual policies that are pursued in Congress for decades to come. Well, Third what? parties have historically raised absolutely... Sorry to interrupt you. I was going to say one of the things that they were that they were talking about was um, what they call the stranglehold on democracy. The fact that uh, you know Americans think of the presidential race as a, as a two-horse race. Is there a serious debate going on in America right now about the electoral system? Absolutely. This is the first time in the last 100 years that a plurality of Americans, 40 percent of the American public consider themselves independents. That means that the two major parties are shedding supporters election season after election season, and a good subsection of the country is yearning for another voice. And precisely because of this ground swelling of desire for another voice, the two major parties are doing whatever they can to prevent alternate voices from entering this political process. So we're seeing exclusion from presidential debates. We're seeing scant media coverage of third parties. We're seeing efforts to keep third parties off of ballots around the country. Every conceivable hurdle that the two major parties can throw at these third party candidates is being thrown at them because the two major parties are actually losing influence. So there is a discussion going on because so many Americans are hungry for a third party voice, but the real question is, when will a third party voice that's strong enough to overcome these major hurdles actually arise with genuine grassroots support and challenge the dominance of the Republican Democratic parties? Well, let's have a look at what some of the, some of the things these third party voices were talking about. I mean, uh, these are issues you don't hear from the main parties, aren't they? Uh, civil rights, uh, repealing the Patriot Act, legalizing marijuana. Do these things need talking? about? Absolutely. What was remarkable about this actual debate is you had four candidates from all over the political spectrum, the left, the right, the libertarian movement, and they agreed on a number of issues that Romney and Obama either don't discuss or have directly opposing viewpoints. Ending the drug war, the corporate influence over our political process, the repealing of the Patriot Act, and most interestingly on foreign policy, all four candidates wanted to cut our, mil our military spending, wanted to pull our troops from around the world, wanted to end our war in Afghanistan, wanted to stop drones from attacking civilians around the world, wanted to essentially refashion American foreign policy to make it less materialistic and less interventionist. This is in direct contradiction to what both Romney and Obama said in last night's presidential debates. So I think that these four third party candidates raised absolutely critical issues that shape both domestic policy and international policy, but unfortunately, because of our exclusionary presidential debate process, the vast majority of Americans will hear none of these issues. Uh, and in fact, the vast majority of Americans won't vote for these people because it's perceived that a vote for these people would be a wasted vote. I mean, would, would you vote for any of them? <laughs> I'm not voting for one of these four uh, presidential candidates. That's, it, 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 it creates this kind of situation that so long as a third party candidate is marginalized, precisely because they can't get on the ballot or they can't get into the debates, they're essentially reduced to a spoiler candidate and often relegated to the dustbins of history. So until third party candidates are treated with sufficient respect, 
that they can actually either build a long-term third party or actually be viable contenders for the presidency, it's going to be very hard to persuade the vast majority of voters to take their actual presidential campaigns as seriously as they deserve to be treated. So the systemic structure of our political process makes it much harder for voters to actually do what their heart tells them, which is to look at alternatives other than Republican Democratic nominees. George, great to get your thoughts there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. George Farah from Open Debates there. Thank you for having me.